Having an inventory of which devices are on the network and what services are running on those devices is an important part of network management, and Nmap has been a very popular open source tool for over 25 years to solve that problem. While Nmap has a very powerful command line output that is good for integrations into scripts, what I want to show you today is how to make that output into a really nice HTML report. The prerequisites for doing this are having a Linux system with Nmap installed, as well as having a command line XML parser that is available in most Linux distributions. I'm using Debian for this demo. The commands I'll be using, along with the custom style sheet I will be applying, will be available in the description below and hosted by sponsor of today's video, Blumera. The SIM and XDR platform that simplifies security for IT teams. Blumera turns complex security into a simple, swift, and stress-free experience, giving you the freedom to focus on what matters most. I thank Blumera for being a sponsor, and let's get started on the video. Let's start with the basics. I want to scan a single device on my network so I can type in Nmap and then the IP address of the device I want to scan. And it will run a ping, confirm that device responds to that ping, and then show us all of the ports that are available on there. Now, if I wanted to do something a little bit more advanced or show all the inventory, I can actually use a slash 24 and that will scan the entire subnet in Nmap. And this is good, but it takes a little bit longer and it'll dump it all out to the command line here. So let's run this command and show you. And it took 26 seconds to scan. And now we have a whole list here of all those different devices on my network and which ports are open. Now you can also do commands in Nmap to shorten this, such as Nmap-SN and then the range. And this is just going to do a quick ping scan across all of these. And I just want to see which ones are responding. So now it gives me a list and it tells me the host is up and the latency, the return ping time essentially of each of those hosts. Another option when doing Nmap is to set a range. For example, if we wanted to do IPs three through six, we could simply run this command here and it's going to do three, four, five, and six. So we'll go ahead and run that. And it gives you the results for each of these IPs and the ports that are on there. But let's go ahead and get a little bit more extended information. And we're going to focus in on one system, the 172.16.16.5. And for this command, we're going to run sudo mmap s capital V and a capital O, and we're going to focus in on this IP address. What this will do and why we have to run sudo is I want to run operating system detection, which is the dash O, and then I want the extended information for each port it finds open, the version, hopefully, of the software that's running on those ports. Now, what Nmap has done here is tell us not only that OpenSSH is here on port 22, but we can see which version it's running right here. Same thing with, we know it's not just open port 80 with HTTP, but it's running Nginx. We have our Samba version. We also see that it's specifically Nginx again on 443. We see Samba here on 445. Now this is not always gonna be 100% accurate, but it's interesting to see the extra extended information that you find by running that. And it did identify this properly as a system that is running Linux. Now that's great for looking at an individual IP, but if we were to run this and want an entire network inventory, and we wanted to do the entire subnet here, or even a series of subnets, you would end up with a lot of data. You can actually use TACTAC OX and then give it a name, Network Inventory XML, and this will generate an XML file out of the output. So instead of having to parse through it through the command line or look through it through a basic text file, it'll give it a more structured format by putting it in XML. Now, while I do like the formatting, it gives it an XML and it's great for parsing this into other systems and importing it. It's a little bit less human readable unless you're one of those humans that just prefers to look at things in XML. So let's go ahead and convert this XML to HTML. And that's where this little tool comes in, XSLTPROC. This is just a processor that will take XML and output it into nicer clean HTML. So we'll go ahead and make sure that's installed. Now let's take that XML file and output it to an HTML. And this is where that tool comes in, XSLTPROC, TACO, the network inventory HTML. You're actually telling it to output to this format. And then we have the network inventory XML. That's actually our input file. I know it may seem reversed, but we're converting this XML file into an HTML file. And without any options or style sheets, this is what it looks like. It has the command at the top I ran to build this. So there is the command that was run that built the file. And here are all the results. It doesn't look bad. I'm not thrilled with the kind of green look, or maybe it feels kind of retro and you like it. You can stop here if this is fine, but I think this is at least 
pretty human readable compared to looking at the XML or going through the command line. And of course, once it's in a browser, it's easy to modify this, put it into an archive, a PDF, or many of the spreadsheet programs will let you do things such as copy and paste this and build spreadsheets out to start making your inventory and maybe making a to-do list to figure out why so many ports are open on so many things. Now let's talk about style sheets. You can actually create custom style sheets to apply to this parser. I got a pretty basic one here. It just gives it a little bit more modern look. And like I said, maybe you like the retro look, but I wanted to make it look a little bit more modern. And it's going to look for these values and then apply a specific CSS to them with this style sheet. So let's go ahead and close this and show you how to apply it. Now the command is pretty much the same. We're going to use TACO. We're going to do network inventory. I'm going to add the word stylized to it for this HTML output. Then we're going to apply that style sheet, the nmap stylesheet.xsl. And then we're going to give it the input file, the network inventory XML. So it's the same source XML file. We're just outputting it a little bit different by applying a style sheet. We still have the same command run. So it's the same data, the same XML file. But I think this has a little bit more modern look. And of course, up to you. You can customize this further. Maybe put your own information at the top of how you want this presented, customize that CSS some more. But I think this is a little bit easier, more human readable. And we could still do the same thing if we were to copy and paste this. This would land in many spreadsheet systems quite fine to start your to-do list and start inventorying everything and maybe building some projects or really clear documentation inventory for what you found on the network. Now, this barely scratches the surface for the full breadth of what you can do with Nmap. Nmap's a little bit more than just a scanner these days. It actually has a lot of extended features, including full vulnerability scanning and some vulnerability validation to see if something's been patched. There's an entire ecosystem that you can really dive into with Nmap. Maybe I'll do some more advanced videos later on, but the goal of this one was just to be able to get you a very human readable form of inventory so you can start understanding what's on your network and have a good grasp on that because inventory is the first step to getting things secure because you can't secure what you don't know about. So check out that blog post down below. There's actually a little bit more information that Bloomera has in that blog post, including the commands I used in that style sheet that I mentioned. So go ahead and check them out. And we thank them again for sponsoring the video. But let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts and comments down below. Head over to my forums, forums.learnsystems.com to have a more in-depth discussion about this and other topics. Like and subscribe to see more content on the channel. Check out Nmap site and check out the movie history. I always get a kick out of that. They keep a running list of movies where Nmap has been used to show hacking, which I always get a kick out of. So I'll go ahead and check that as well. All right. Thanks.